the Clinton do? Um, I've been trying to get some gear ready for my ATVs, get it repacked. Um, last hunting season, last uh, elk season in September. Um, beautiful, just like today. It's right about 42 degrees out here right now. Sunny, light breeze, pretty stinking nice. Um, up hunting uh, at about 9,000 feet, anywhere between 85 to 12, actually. Um, we were ranging. We did quite a bit of walking. We did quite a bit of... Uh, we really didn't do much ATV in. We were mostly just had our backpacks and stuff like that on and uh, just cresting the mountains and stuff like that. One afternoon, um, we were pushing the hills and uh, we come back down and we took the ATVs and we decided that we would head out, and go down to another road, take a trail to cut back on this other bench. Um, a bench in the mountains is just a... Uh, the trail's cut from one point up through a canyon, and then the bench is just just one of the steps that you got high high terrain coming down, and then it kind of benches out and then comes down. Just a step in the terrain. So we are going to go look at all that. So as we were going back by camp, I looked down on my fuel gauge, and I, I probably had about a quarter tank. Now, up here, when I'm out half a tank is usually where I want to refuel my tank, refill it up, and then have the reserve, whatever's left in that tank. Um, I had emptied out a lot of gear on my ATV because, you know, when you're crawling through the thing, I just didn't want it rattling in the back and on my cage. So, there's a few items I had, quite a bit of items I had taken off of my, my unit. Um, one, I needed more room. Uh, I had to have my bow case on there. Um, you know, I was just looking for weight and room. Um, down deep, I think I knew I was screwing up. So, but we weren't going to be too far from anywhere. As we headed on down the road, we passed camp, and I looked at my gas gauge, and I said, you know, I should stop. I should stop. I should stop. But I wanted to keep up with them. So um, I was keeping up with Greg and Amber, my uh, daughter and son-in-law, and uh, Greg's cousin. And he had a UTV. Uh, it was a buggy style. So anyway, we went about another mile, pulled off. Greg, Amber got on with me on my ATV. And then Greg and his cousin got on his ATV because the UTV was too big to get in there um, on that trail. So we had to park it on the side of the road. Anyway, we headed in um, probably about a half mile, maybe just a little bit more. Pretty good trail. Um, rough, bumpy, rocks climbing up and over. Um, having a lot of fun. Amber and I were laughing. We were watching Greg and, and uh, Omar. Now, Amando, sorry, Amando. And we were having, you know, it was a good time. We got back in there quite a ways, and we pulled off. We were going to kind of walk a little bit, and we decided, you know what, that's just too thinking tired to walk today. <laughs> don't wanna, I don't want to push New Tundra this late in the afternoon. You know, we hadn't scouted it. We hadn't done any of that. So we just got back on the ATVs. We saw another gentleman and his kids. They had a small buggy two-seater and they were on the trail so we talked to them Conf uh, got confirmation this trail went back down to another road that uh, Greg knew I had not even been on this area so as we were traversing back in there being Colorado sure enough started clouding up and it clouded up fast and it was dark um did I have my, my jacket? I had a heavy jacket. Not a heavy jacket, a heavy shirt, something like this. And uh, actually it was uh, one of my BDU blouses that I had bought. With It's a BDU, they're heavy. Anyway, I gave that one up. And Amber had a, uh, I had a rolled up um, pullover. Um, mine zip in the front so she put that on I found in that I had left in my uh, one of my bags on the ATV I had left it there it was an old beat up 
uh, red plastic throwaway poncho. Um, had my ball cap on. She had a cap. Actually, she had a beanie on and a stocking cap. We started going. Them raindrops were that big. I mean, they were just big old raindrops. We were hiding under trees when we could. Um, pressing on. We got ready. We knew the rain was coming. Um, they would hit the ground and the drops would actually bounce. Um, and then the rain got pretty stinking severe. She was cold. I had her covered up best I could with the poncho and me and the poncho. She was hiding under it part of it. Then it turned to hail. Temperature dropped crazy fast. Hail was hurt my hand. She's tucked in right behind me. She was just, I mean, it was cold. Um, Greg and Mondo, they got ahead of us. Um, I had to stop once just to readjust and uh, I lost track of them. The water was coming down the road, washed out their trail, their tracks. I wasn't sure when we got to a road why my ATV, my big 700 died. Um, and I was low on fuel. Not exactly sure where I was in the mountains. I knew we were headed back towards camp, but I didn't know how far we had to go. ATV died, died. So she, Amber, she's like, Daddy, I can't, we got I gotta get, I'm too cold, I'm too cold, I'm too cold. Not saying anything against her. Um, I was cold, so that, that right there was the breaking point okay so we got off the atv we got into off the edge of the road into some heavy timber um the best i could find that wasn't i mean the timber terrain was real steep so we just got off the edge into some small trees pulled off my camel bank again i have taken essential stuff that i should not have taken out of that bag um I had, I had a lighter, I had a few odds and end things, um, but most of it, and I kicked myself right in the butt, and it was my fault. I had not upgraded my hand warmers, um, so the ones I had in there were expired and old, older, so they were not functioning, so I, those were not even helping her. Um, the only poncho I had was the one the red one so i started a lean to getting the cover out of you know get us out of the rain every time i tied it hooked it it would just tear um it was a pain in the butt but i got some cover for her then you know she's hunkered down the the jacket she was wearing was just so wet i took it up got it off of her i had to wring it out and then got it back over her for a cover i didn't want all that water just sitting on her um, she was getting drenched again. It was soaking up water. Uh, Greg and Mondo, they were ahead of us somewhere. And the only thing they knew was just get back to camp. Um, they actually almost crashed once trying to make a turn going too fast. But uh, Greg was able to recover it pretty quick. Anyway, back to my story. Um, I didn't have any survival gear. Nothing. I went back up on the ATV and I had basically stripped my bags for weight and noise and just, just, I didn't have what I needed. I knew exactly where it was. It was in the back of my pickup. So that brought me to realization we were in trouble. Um, I had one big lighter, um, a couple little, little things for getting fire started and they were old. Because I had not updated that part of the pack. I was in trouble. My daughter was in trouble. So my mind was racing. One, how am I going to protect my daughter? How am I going to protect me? And it was probably 20 degrees. And hailstones probably about the size of dimes. With rain. Um, not enough equipment that I needed. So that brought me to this. Okay, so I've done some research. I've done some going back through all my gear. I've I've looked at different things of what I can use. Um, on these packs, I have uh, a couple different things I've I've gone on my bot and some things I recommend. Um, this is uh, a survival box. Is whatever you deem 
you need, okay? It could be a, a five-gallon bucket if that's what you desire. You know, that's all you need is one gallon, one five-gallon bucket, then that's all you need. It depends on what you have in that bucket, okay? So, these are some of the items that I have, and I went down the bottom. Fire starter, okay? These are the little boxes I'm gonna use. They're just little ammo cans. Got them from Walmart, uh, three bucks a box. So I'm gonna have two full can um, things to fire start. These are little blocks in here. You can actually break them. You have a knife and you can break them off, get your fire start. There will be two emergency ponchos in my box, two. Now I'm hoping you can see all of this because I had to turn my phone around. I'm not exactly sure what you're seeing. They do fit in here, trust me. Okay. This is rope that the electricians use to pull line from one side, you know, through the underground. Um, I have found a gob of that. Um, I have probably 30 of these rolls. So if anybody absolutely needs some, I can get you some of this. So there's that. In my box, this is from my old flight days. It's air crew manual. It has everything you would ever need. How to make punches, how to do what, how to make a shelter, what you're looking for, um, how to just pull logs down to make shelters. These are called the uh, the tree well. How to get one of those ponchos. Uh, part of your... I haven't gone through this thing in so long. I just need to reread it and have some of my buddies. How to build a tent, how to build snow forts, you know, these are your main things that you can build. You can throw snow over the top. Now, this is long term, okay, guys? This is water. You have a raft that sits in here. You have different, different things you can do. Like I said, I haven't gone through this. I need to go through it and clean this up, get it all cleaned up, put it in a bag so the water and crap don't hit it. How to start a fire, how to make a bow string, how to get you know what you're looking for how to get the, the wood going get the fire going outside inside all these different techniques how to build the airflow will suck through your fire underneath your cooking you know your drying socks near a tree there's so much in here and uh, i'm trying to find more of these for you guys these are air force pamphlet i'm going to try to see if i can find them out at the air force base and see if I can get some more of these things. Um, March 1996, how do you like that, huh? So this is going in my box. I have, uh, these are baby wipes um, or and or toilet paper. All you have to do is add just a little bit of water and these do really great. I do have extra string, okay? You have a, a safety whistle. You know, it's, it's going in a box. If you hear somebody, you can get on the whistle, okay? I have another one over here from part of the, and it used to be a light, but it's shot, it's all worn out. Um, but it's another whistle. Waterproof matches, okay? Even though a whole box of these goes in, even though I went and you buy new lighters, this is the only thing, my little Bic lighter, I believe is the only thing that actually kept Amber concentrated, I gave her the job just get the fire going here use this 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 and this just work the fire um and i will get everything i'll start working other stuff you just get the fire going sweetie okay so that's what i told her i said get the fire going so she worked a big lighter over and over and over until she had a little tiny flame burning it wasn't much wider than that okay but she had a flame and that kept her concentrated on the flame. And I believe that's what actually kept my daughter from going into full hypothermia. She was already in the hypothermia, probably the third stage of hypothermia. I was going to lose her very quickly if we could not get the fire going. Um, hand warmers. Look at your hand warmers. Find, you can go to uh, Costco. You can buy the big box. Look at these. Check them out every once in a while. Open a pack up. See if they get warm and, you know, and if they're still working. Put a couple of packages of those in there. And the best place for a hand warmer, and this is, this is the craziest part. Survival mode, under your arm, 
right here under your arm you have the uh, the main arteries to your arms so okay and on the inside of your legs right here can you see that right there that is your main artery into your legs that supplies the blood to your toes so you don't get frostbite you need the hand warmers to get that blood that's why you put your hands there when you're cold fingers are cold you got to get that blood hot to get to your toes to warm your toes up or you will lose them and the same thing with your fingers you got to keep your fingers warm or you will get frostbite. Um, hypothermia starts at 52 degrees. You can start getting hypothermia at 52 degrees. Um, dehydration starts. When you think you already need, you know, man, I'm getting thirsty. You're in the second stages of, of dehydration. Second stage. Okay? That's the important stuff. I found these old batteries. Oh. Newspaper. All you have to have is a Ziploc bag of a little bit of a newspaper. Fire starters, I don't have right now. I have a bottle in the house. Um, I didn't bring it out. Um, it is one of Sherry's um, vitamin bottles. They're not real big. I don't. You don't need a big, big one. But because I have this fire starter, I, I'm going to do this. It. Uh, I just have to finish picking it and putting it all together. Cotton balls. Um, are the best okay uh, laundry your uh, dryer sheets and the lint you get off of that very very good fire starter put that in a plastic bag put that in your kit um, put some Vaseline on your cotton balls put a whole bunch of Vaseline on your cotton ball look it in there stick it in that bottle have it in your kit um, you need a good base fire starter so that you can work with it um, fire starter um, on underneath trees even if it's raining get up under a pine tree get the small limbs dig down cut the bark off of uh, um, off your trees you're like your aspen and stuff that ain't gonna work green bark ain't gonna work green limbs anything with a green leaf ain't gonna work um, that a smoke you can use that once you get your fire to put out a signal hey we got a we got smoke um, everybody sees smoke anymore in the in the woods they automatically contact somebody or go look so that's how you get that's a simple signal okay um, you want the small twigs to start building up build you a TP part uh, just kind of stack them up in a TP form and get the fire going under that and continue that process up okay or you can build like the little log cabin to square just kind of build it keep it going up as your fire starts going down remember wherever you have your fire everything underneath it's going to be burning too so be careful you know if you put it on an old dead log that works but you want to make sure that you're not going to set the force on fire well, that's a great signal but that's not what you want to do zip ties um i'm putting zip ties in mind uh, reason is sometimes if you have a poncho or something that you you might need a zip tie to go around a line to hook your string to zip ties um small flashlights gets you a couple of small flashlights from harbor freight and or um and an extra set two batteries for whatever this is a triple a battery so i don't need a double a battery in my kit okay so that's what i'm saying make sure you have the right one this is marker tape here so if you are going to move or if you need to once you get your fire started once you get things settled down you can go put some marker tape up there write your name on it put a pen in here so you can write your name on it hey this date clinton brown okay um this is part of a kit um that i have on the atv this is a light that actually goes in it's a it's not my two million candle power but it does work on the atv so i have probably a 15 foot cord on here that i put on here and uh if I if you're still by your ATV when it broke down, my battery still worked, so I had a good light. Okay. Problem was this pack I had taken out. Okay. And uh, but I actually I had taken it out, but I had put it back in, and I had forgotten all about it. It was inside one of my uh, areas on the. Uh, ATV and I forgot to even look in that one because that's not normally where I'd put it 
It's not where I would have my gear. This has a full size, huge poncho. This would have saved amber, and this is the only thing I needed. The problem was I had put this pack in a completely out of mind part of my ATV bags. It's not where I normally keep my first aid pack. It's not where I keep my run gear, you know, my fire starter, my survival pack. It wasn't even in that side. It was in my toolbox side. I don't need tools, okay? I even carry a hatchet in there. Um, the hatchet, I had taken out. Duh. What the hell for? So, yeah, now I have a hatchet for both ATVs. Um... That is that will never come out of my survival side bags. Um, it actually came down to I could we couldn't get the fire going well enough. I actually have a sock that I went up and I drenched in fuel. I took a stick, I run it in, put it inside the sock, run it all the way down into the very bottom of the tank, soaked up as much fuel as I could, um, get on it. And then I headed back down. Again, it was raining just, it was, it was a massive amount of rain. Amber was doing her best to shield the fire, to keep it going. And I come back down over the hill and I said, I got gas. I said, I got the sock and gas. And she said, Daddy, I got the fire going. So that saved us. She got the fire going. And uh, But see, I, I could have had her covered in this poncho and... To the life of me, I could have lost my daughter due to the hypothermia because I wasn't thinking and I moved this pack over to the wrong side of my bags. Um, and in my mind, there's nothing there. Small tool kit, I'd taken everything out, but I had slid this kit, this little bag with the light and this poncho over out of the way. And I had stuffed it in a different direction. So when you put gear together right on their first date, um, know where your first aid kits are. Know where your survival fire starter kits are. Know where your your gear is going to be. Even though I put two ponchos in here, I'm putting this poncho. I have another one just like it. And I'm putting it on my other ATV and a bag by itself. Um, it's going to have its own container um, with hand warmers and stuff like that. I'm on, I, and then I got these other old bags that I got from the military years and years ago that have information in them. Um, one, two, cow. This is actually one of my old shooting bags. So this tells you how many rounds. <laughs> I actually kept track of how many bullets I would use on, on when I go out to shoot. So good fire starter, right? Right, I put that back in the bag. But I have this old bag. It's an old tool kit. I have another carry old bag. Off to lighting kind of thing in there. I can use that. I can put that in that other one. Um, I have uh, inflatable. I have a, uh, a little tire compressor. I have a tire patch kit, a plug kit. I have uh, a can of tire inflator. You know, you can use on cars. I have that in my kit. I have one for each bag now. Um, like I said, there's so many things that you can use out there. I want you guys to actually stop. I know that things, this has been really long. It's 23 minutes. But uh, I'm going to put these kits together now. And I just want you to ride safe. Um, and remember, you can only ride motorcycles, street bikes, ATVs, UTVs, Jeeps, pickups, four-wheeling, highway. When you go with a trip with somebody, you're only as good as your weakest link. The newest guy to the trail. The newest guy to any vehicle that you're using, his new pickup, his new Jeep, he don't know how it's going to handle. You are only as good as he is, okay? So keep him in, in your mirror. Follow him. Keep him in your mirror. Don't let him get too far behind you. Watch out for them. Watch out for others. Um, a safe ride, and keep yourself healthy. I'm going to put these together and get them on the ATVs. Thanks for watching.